I just finished recording this one and it goes a little long, but it goes into some technical detail that will help you diagnose the installation problem as well as a better understanding of why Python was installed the way it was, where it's installed, and a number of those things. But if you can open up PowerShell, the program PowerShell, and type out Python, and you get 3.8.2, you're good to go to the next one. For those of you who want a little bit more detail, stay watching this one. So we want to install, create, and activate a virtual environment. But before I can do that, I have to update my path. And I also need to make sure that my path has Python on it. You're probably wondering, what does that even mean? Well, what we want to do is open up a program called PowerShell. So what PowerShell does is it gives us the ability to type out commands, right? So I can actually run programs by typing out a command. So let's say, for instance, I want to see what's inside of my desktop. Now, if you're using the GUI or with your mouse, you would click on the Finder Explorer, the File Explorer, and click on Desktop, and there's everything in your desktop, right? I used my mouse completely, but that's not commands to get there. So to do it in PowerShell with commands, you would do CD Desktop, and then you would do something called LS, which is List, or DIR, which is showing me the directory. LS is what you'll see a lot on Windows, or rather on Linux and Mac. LS is a Unix command. Um, so anyways, this is just where we'll be typing a lot of different commands to run our various programs, right? Instead of double clicking to open a program, we'll type it out. In my case, Python, right? So typing out Python here will actually open up the Python interpreter much like we did before when we went to the start menu and clicked and opened up Python. It's, it's the same interpreter, right? It's running off of the same. And to verify this, we can import something called sys. So import, I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Import sys and then print sys.executable. And that shows me where the Python program lives. It's called an executable, which is that exe file. I'm sure you've seen exe files before. That's what we downloaded um, to install Python. But the thing here is it's showing me the path or the location on my system where Python 3.8 lives. And it says 38 because you can't put a period in a folder name like, you know, you just can't, that's just how Windows works. Okay, so now that we see that on the original Python interpreter that we saw, we can do that same thing inside of PowerShell and that's import sys and print sys.executable, hit enter. And what do you know? There is that same exact path, it's identical. And where do we get that path? Why is it there? Well, when we installed it, that's where we set it. And I can also look in the file explorer, go into my PC, go into my C drive, which is way too full. And there it is, there's Python 38. There's also Python 36 and Python 27, which of course stands for 2.7 and 3.6. So why is it that 3.8 is what came up and not 3.6? Well, this is the part of the path that I was mentioning. So when I typed out Python, Windows looked up in its system and var variables and said, hey, what do I use for this term Python, right? So if I exit out of this and I type something like ABC, it's gonna say, I don't know what ABC is essentially, right? But I know what Python is. And when I know what Python is, I'll do what Python says. And how it knows this is inside of the system environment variables. So Python was added to the path when we did that installation. So what we can see is if I go to the start menu and X at the same time, so start menu key and X at the same time opens this up. We click on system. We see my system information or about it. We click on system info right here. Then we click on advanced system settings in the left-hand side. And then we look for environment variables in the advanced tab, right? Oh, I don't think you see that. Let me bring this down. So we've got the computer name, hardware advanced, and then 
environment variables. So you click on environment variables and you'll get a window uh, that's like this. So yet again, I'll zoom in. And what you'll see is you'll see user variables and system variables. The system variables are the ones that allow me to do this across different users versus the user variables is just for my current logged in user. So typically when I'm using Python, I put it across all users. Um, again, assuming you know what you're doing, but you know if, you, if, if this is your computer, then it's completely okay. Um, so inside of my path, then I come in here and say edit. And what I see here is these various scripts. Now, you should also see these as well, assuming that you clicked that item where it said add Python to your environment variables. Assuming you did that and also add Python to the path, also assuming you did that, you'll see these. Now, if I wanted a different version of Python, so you have 3.6 in here, I can just move those items up. So I move them up all the way to the top, just like that. And so now Python 3.8 is below 3.6. And so we have it configured or entire system configured just slightly differently. So I'll go ahead and say, okay, and okay. I'll close out a PowerShell to end that session, open up a new PowerShell, and then just type out Python again. And now there you go. I've got a different version of Python working. It's 3.6, as you see there. And of course you could print out the system executable and it will show you where that's located as well um, if you were to want to do that. But of course, I'm going to go back into my environment variables and put them back to where they were because uh, I want to use Python 3.8. So I'll just move that up and move that up. And there we go. Okay. So for those of you who had all of this work out just fine, you'll know that, you know, this, this is just, it just worked, right? So when I installed it and I ran Python, um, Python ran. I didn't have any errors or any issues. Uh, but for some of you, you might have tried to install it and, and it would have looked similar to this, but it would have said Python instead. Um, and that's where some of the configuration gets a little tricky. So if you ran into that issue, then uninstall Python and do it again um, until you actually can get it down and right. Um, worst case scenario, you can update your path with the system executable much like I just showed you. So if you have questions on that, please let me know. I definitely wanna help you get through this one to make sure that you got your system all set up. Uh, and I realized that what we just talked about is a lot, uh, but the other part of this is if you go to cfe.sh slash blog, what you can see there is there's a guide for installing Python and Django on Windows. And we just went through a number of the items that are on there, but make sure you check out that guide uh, if you're also still having problems. So the next thing we need to do is actually get our virtual environment going.